Hello, I am Martin Fenska and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Civilization 5 as Morocco. So it's here again, last episode of another Let's Play. We should be 12 turns away from another victory and I think even if like the whole world declared war on us at this point, we still should be able to protect our capital for uh, long enough to uh, complete the, the last booster. We still need the cockpit of course, but we should have money for that. So, uh, we will finish the Let's Play in this episode, and that means uh, before we do that, I'll talk a little bit about what you can expect next, and maybe more importantly, when you can expect it. So, right now, it's very early Friday for me, so this episode comes uh, out during the day, and then I'll take uh, this weekend off when I will prepare for the next Let's Play. Again, we'll have a full C5 uh, Let's Play and on top of that, I want to do like a mini series, uh, something a little bit different that I wanted to do for quite a while. So I have like two series to prepare for. I would like to start both of them on Monday. Might start one of them like on Sunday, but I'm not promising anything. So most likely we'll have uh, two videos coming out on Monday. Uh, the small one, I won't talk about that at all. The other one, the full Let's Play, I actually don't know what it's gonna be yet because uh, I have over 20 suggestions from you guys but the problem is everyone suggested something else the only save that showed more than once was Greece and it was like twice so it might be Greece but I'm not sure I also have some saves that I wanted to play for quite a while so yeah, I will have to think about this uh, during the weekend a little bit, and um, I really can't promise anything, as I said, I myself don't know what's it gonna be yet. The only thing that I know is that I want to do uh, something more aggressive, because after this long, uh, long peaceful pacifist, pacifist let's play, I real, really feel like the urge to kill some units so that's one thing and there is one more thing that has nothing to do with c5 but i feel like i have to mention this because it's a game that uh, i've been following for so long and um i expect so much from it that i kind of have to maybe promote it a little bit uh today there is a new huge patch for stellar tactics i did a short let's try series about the game it's the still early in the development but today it gets a huge patch that opens the game from one solar system or star system to the whole universe with like 10,000 star systems so this is probably the most important patch for the game where we'll find out how um, or if the potential of the game can be fulfilled and I'm so looking forward to this I'll definitely be playing the game during the weekend and uh, uh, during the next week I will try to bring you some videos uh, how the patch worked and uh, how the game looks like now when it like op when it's open to the whole universe so that's that and um, I think now we can start playing and finish our Marco let's play uh, we have the money or I think we almost have the money for the cockpit so what I'll do I'll probably just uh, plunder like two three more caravans quickly and then send our paratrooper back so that we have all our units in our territory just in case someone decides to attack so that we have everything in our territory ready to defend but right now we can end the turn Lost aluminum, does that mean no, we still have some? Okay, people are starting denouncing us the first turn. Very well. Denunciations are fine. They can denounce, uh, or if everyone denounces us, it's fine. As long as they're not declaring war, we are perfectly safe. Proposal, yeah, we are, we are trying to uh, do something to him. What was the suggestion? Decolon decolonize him, I think. <clears throat> I'm not surprised he doesn't like that. Uh, some more wars, Sydney election rigged, how are we doing on city-states, just out of curiosity. Look at that, we actually have six alliances now. If someone declares on us, even the city-states should keep them busy for a while. Uh, you can probably stay here. Uh, here we have a sub. I think at this point, I actually want to get the money anywhere I can so I will 
even start attacking Indonesian trade routes. Because if they attack, it won't be because of the modifier that we get from pillaging the trade routes. They will just attack because they want to prevent us from winning. I don't think getting another modifier really changes that much. While getting extra 1300 gold can be important, it can mean one extra unit that we can buy or something like that. Uh, okay. Oh, come on. Trading routes. Cover it. Don't do that. That was 2000 extra gold for me. Let's grab this guy. Just notice there is one more trade route we can plunder. And what the heck? Look how far we can move. Uh, let's get out of here. We have enough 11,000. Plus we have the nuclear sub looking for cargo ships. We'll be fine. Next. I was trying to find a way how to speed things up off camera, but there really isn't a way. Maybe actually, how long do we have to wait here? Two more turns for any great person. But we won't have enough faith to buy a scientist or engineer, so it's not gonna work this way either. Maybe we could use the faith to just buy a unit. Another Apollo program finished. I'm gonna send the, the ironclad back as well and just uh, get rid of it. Because it's very obsolete at this point. Or can you. Okay, cargo ship. Uh, about you. Let's check to the south. People. Doesn't matter at this point. Can we lock something with food, maybe? Next. Another ideology it should be order yeah, at this point. Like, if there is new ideology, it will be order because of the pressure. Come on, come on. Only 10 turns left. Don't crush on me now. Could maybe try to go this way because there are guaranteed uh, cargo ships. Oh, there are cargo ships here as well, it seems. Okay, fine. Production. That's an interesting question. Think about giant death robot, but if there is a war, uh, uranium will be like the first uh, resource that we lose. So get just or get the death robot just to have it, and then not being able to do anything with it. Not sure that's a good idea. Uh, modern armor, maybe. I'm not a big fan of this late game uh, armor units.
So I'll just get the guided missile. One time thing, usually you don't want to build the, these, but uh, considering how much time we have left, it's like the only unit that we can actually finish. And Japan lost its capital, so yeah, it's Assyria finally conquering Japan. Now we should uh, solve the problem with coal. And. Uh, Could maybe get those upgrades. Nah, it will be too expensive. And the melee ship really won't be able to do much. Just get rid of it. Main reason why I'm getting rid of a unit is that I need some room for something better. Forward. And. After the core refiner, is there anything that we want to build? Maybe build walls, to be honest. There could be some paratroopers. We can see that there are some paratroopers on our border. And with strength 13, the city doesn't feel safe. So I'll even move the fusilier back, probably. Uh, you can move back one tile. 45, 45. Okay, cargo ships. Well, it's nice. How much money do we have? 14,000. We'll actually be able to get enough money to buy the last booster. That would allow us to win like one turn faster, maybe. I'd like to see what's here inside of this lagoon. There might be some internal trade routes. Oh. Action. Yeah, let's just build castle as well. Still 23 is nothing. Uh, let's get at least like 40-ish defense. It's not like with strength 40 to 50, we'd be able to uh, like defend the city if uh, Indonesia really, def really, really decided to go after the city. But uh, it can make like one or two turns difference, which of course at this point one or two turns is huge. I really like how much uh, strength you managed to get in our coastal cities. Somehow managed to build up over 100 strength. So those cities will be able to defend themselves for a while. And I think we'll just get out of here. Uh, production, what's next? Yeah, we can grab the arsenal as well. Because um, for a while it looked like that our coastal cities will be our main weakness. We won't be able to really defend them no matter what. Somehow, all the defensive buildings actually worked. 114 and 109. Pretty good for cities that are on planes, really don't have any natural defenses. Okay. Where to end it? Strategic monopoly. What is this? Tourism contest. Oh, we won a tourism contest. Wow. Well, we are almost 2,000, so we are producing more tourism at, than William right now. But yeah, even with 2,000 tourism, uh, culture victory really wasn't an option in this game. Thanks to William. Yeah, let's get out of Assyrian territory and keep going. How are we doing? 3, 5, almost there. We have room for two more units, so we finished the nuclear submarine. Okay. So finally, he had enough. 
I'm actually surprised he didn't declare war like 10 caravans ago. Of course, he's too far to really do anything in the four turns. So this war shouldn't be relevant. The only relevant war would probably be Assyria and or Indonesia, maybe not even Assyria. We have those minefields uh, next to our, or in our coastal city. Oh, this is surprising. So it will take a while for any ships to really get in the range of our coastal cities. Or the only way how to get to us is from the east. Another golden age. Oh, I can't say no to this. Is the missile and why do we have a bomber in the city? Let's rebase that. And I'll probably rebase the missile as well. There is still that chance that Indonesia will just try to nuke us to oblivion. And if they do that, Rabat will most likely be the first target. Is this doesn't matter? Production. Mm, don't really care about anything. I might as well invest into defense. Go. Now we get the globalization, so we can buy the cockpit. There's another war. But... Oh, okay. This is the war that I was afraid of and I expected for a long time, but I think he's too late. I'll make the last, like, two turns a little bit more interesting. I wonder how many units he has ready for the attack. There is the globalization, and we should probably get you out of here as soon as possible. Uh, heavy bomber. Yeah, 44 for the stern, the guided missile as well. And we can already attack something. That's probably this guy. Wow, that was a lot of damage from a city. Move you back a little bit. I'll be safer. 45, 45. Okay, research. And. Uh, whatever. Oh. Let's not forget that cockpit. Go. So two turns. Maybe three turns. I'm not sure if I can pop the booster right away or if I have to wait a turn. But I think if I'm or when I'm building it, I should be able to pop it on the first turn. And look at all those paratroopers. Wow, this war would be such a pain. In Already lost some trading routes, not a big surprise there. Uh, get that cockpit. Gonna do this. Just want to get rid of the units that are inside of our territory. Come on. Uh, 
Yeah, Heavy Bomber is doing a really great job. Basically taking no damage. And doing pretty good job at destroying all these stupid paratroopers. On to finish off this one. Anyone else? Come on. I will be sending any bombers this way. There could be some uh, anti-air defense, especially in uh, Ekbatana. Let's make sure we don't lose any units. And... Uh, does it really matter? Whatever. Give some free buildings, so why not? But look at our happiness, how it suddenly dropped from like almost 100 to 45. So this war would definitely be a challenge if we had to fight for longer. If better position... False needs orders. 45, 45. 4, 6. This should be safe. Also, look at the city state. Uh, they are doing a great job at slowing down the armies. I'm pretty sure I'll be able to fight this war for at least 20 turns. And I'm thinking 20 turns we should be able to end the war. So we wouldn't get completely destroyed. This will be very annoying, they will most likely pillage like 80% of our tiles with all the, those paratroopers. Uh, oh, we can even see how strong people are. Japan disappeared from the map completely. 16, 23,000, 20,000. Okay, I'm surprised that Indonesia isn't stronger than just 16,000. We can close this, and I wanted to see one more thing. We actually managed to win a culture race in the end. So we managed to beat everyone, even culture-wise, like culture production-wise. But... That's enough. Let's get the win. I'll zoom in. Should see the launch. And there it is. And the science victory. Okay, what do we want to know? Demographics. Ranking. But it, it was a proper science victory. This is how I um, expect the science victory or basically non-militaristic victory to look like. That you focus on one thing and you win in that area. It's not the way when you first defeat the whole world with your armies and then go hey i won culture victory after the whole world was destroyed by me in this case we really just won because of our science and we had no chance of winning in any other ways and military played no part in it so i'm actually quite proud of this still sucks that i didn't manage to get the culture victory that i was aiming for but i will take this it looked pretty grim at some point during the game so yeah, I think this was a good one. Uh, is the replay going to work? Can we get graphs? Those should work. What do we want to see? We are green. And let's keep an eye on uh, Bakal, who is like dark blue-gray-ish. here. And uh, Indonesia is this weird color. Who is white, by the way? Oh, uh, William. So maybe we should... Keep an eye on that as well. And we are in the middle of the pack while these guys were running away with the game from this is probably like a Renaissance era. But what we want to know. Let's check culture per turn. Look at look at William. Well, that's probably to be expected. It's because of his unique ability. When he started really trading with everyone, he got these bonuses. But look, look at Indonesia. Where the hell did they get so much culture suddenly? Wow, this is crazy. Happiness, 
Puritan Gold Puritan. Again, middle of the pack. Indonesia ahead of everyone. Who is... Yeah, that's Assyria not doing that bad. Happiness. Even happiness-wise, we are not doing that well. This is wrong, though, because the game was telling me that I, we were the happiest save in the world. Um, Broom Maidens, Military Might. Yep, look at that. Military was never a thing for us. We are so far behind everyone. But it just shows that it is possible to fight or to play with weak military when you play the diplomatic game well. Uh, you are, or it's possible to avoid wars. We just had like two wars with um, with Darius that was unavoidable because of the border friction. Just you can't do anything about that really. But other than that, we were able to stay at peace with everyone until like last three turns of the game where they had to declare since we were so close to victory. Number of cities, number of known tags. Yeah, we are. This is probably one of the few graphs where we are ahead. This is the like the final push when you get basically all you were working on or at this in this case, I was working on since like the end of uh, or start of modern era. I was preparing for the final science push, and where we got like basically all of the information era units in a few turns. So that's here. But until then, we are behind until like pretty late in the game. Number of policies. Yeah, look at that, how far behind we were during like the, the Renaissance era. And this is quite frustrating because I was trying to really focus on culture. We even had a world wonder, like culture focused world wonder. And even that didn't help us and we are, we are so far behind here. Population... Oh. Production per turn. Actually, doing quite well production wise, considering how small we are. Science per turn. Uh, tourism. <laughs> Look at that. These are the late game wonders that really help with the tourism a lot. And it maintains work tasks. Okay, so that's it. And. I don't think that we really need to watch this whole thing. I'll probably like, or why not? But there probably won't be that much here since we were we were not fighting. Maybe it shows how the other side of the world, this continent, how it developed. William was the first one to pop the second city, then third city, followed by Mongolia. But Mongolia didn't have enough room to grow. Syria had a start, had a decent starting location. Bakal had pretty good starting location. William as well. William was actually expanding most aggressively with oh, with Indonesia. I wasn't paying attention to those. Uh, also, was a good starting location. Pretty safe location for the capital. And then they could they had only one direction where to expand, but had enough room. So they were pretty safe. Mongolia gets screwed because they are starting in the middle. That they really couldn't focus on just one uh, save and uh, expand properly. If they were starting maybe where Assyria was, if these two were switched, then Mongolia would be a lot more dangerous in this game. They would take out Japan most likely, and then uh, even Assyria. Then we would have a huge Mongolia here. Also, another thing that I should probably mention, our starting location, well, our capital had a decent starting location, not amazing, but a very decent one. Uh, our secondary cities were 
well, average at best. We still managed to get the, the most of it. All the deserts worked in the end. Didn't have, didn't have that many resources. So yeah, I'm quite happy with this victory. Um, but the, here they're flipping the city for a while. They're flipping some cities here. City state. You know, Conquered like probably 20 times in this game. Actually surprised that these two city states survived until the end of the game. Um, and yeah, that's it. So another victory for us. As usual, I hope that you like the let's play. And I hope that you're going to join me for the next one, which again, I repeat, should start uh, this Monday, which is like three days. And yeah, other than that, uh, I wish you have a good time, and as I said, I hope you. Uh, I hope I see you on Monday. Until then, have a good time. Bye bye.